This is a cool ad. In I Think You Should Leave by Tim Robinson, there's a sketch called Game Night where a character named Howie is at a party and he's dropping all these super obscure jazz references for comedic value. It's really, really funny, but because I'm a little bit obsessive, I went through every single reference that he makes and I researched them to see what's real and what's fake. As you might expect, a lot of the references that he makes are fake, but there are some that are 100% real. So I'm gonna go through each of them. This is gonna be fun. First off, jazz legend Marcus the Worm Hicks does not appear to be real, though his name slightly resembles the pattern of Charlie Parker, who was known as Charlie Bird Parker. Bird the Worm, maybe there's something there. I think that's the best reference we can find though. Next, Thaddeus Finks, fake. However, his name does seem to suggest Thelonious Monk's name, who was a jazz legend of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Thaddeus Finks, Thelonious Monk. I think there's enough similarity there that maybe that's where the inspiration came from. Mookie Kramer and the Eight Balls. Mookie Kramer does not appear to be real, but the Eight Balls are real. I actually found one of their albums and I looked through the list of all of the players and there's no one whose name even remotely resembles Mookie Kramer. So it's kind of cool to know that eight balls were real, but Mookie Kramer does not appear to be real. Howie mentions an unnamed jazz musician who played an alto sax with a kink in it. We have no idea who that is. There's nothing obvious that I could find. Also, the man with the freak lips who can hit the high C's all night long. Also, no obvious reference that I could find. Howie also mentions someone who is the king of the tuk-tuk sound. Now, there is no king of the tuk-tuk sound, but in 1921, a ragtime jazz musician named Jules Bufano wrote a piece of music called the Tucker Trot. King of the Tucker Trot sound, king of the tuk-tuk sound. I don't know, maybe that's where the inspiration came from. Roy Donk. Roy Donk? Probably fake, can't find any reference. Jack Marshall, who wrote the Munsters theme song, this guy is real. He actually was nominated for a Grammy in 1965 for the score of the Munsters movie. He not only wrote the Munsters theme song, but also did all the incidental background music and of course the scoring for the film. He also was known for being in charge of the arrangement on Peggy Lee's recording of Fever, which was a popular song in the 1960s as well. So Jack Marshall, 100% real. Tiny Boop Squig Shorterly. Tiny Boop Squig Shorterly. What I mean, come on, is that even a celebrity? One of the best names. Not real, but probably inspired by Wayne Shorterly. This sounds like a sort of plausible pattern for a jazz nickname that someone named Wayne Shorterly could have had. Wayne was a saxophonist who played with Miles Davis in the 1960s. Maybe his alto sax had a kink in it. The Colgate Comedy Hour, 100% real. It played during the 1950s and the 1960s. It competed with the Ed Sullivan Show, which was based on the East Coast. The Colgate Comedy Hour was based in Los Angeles. The Colgate Hour had Jerry Lewis, Abbott and Costello and other comedians and performers that were really popular at the time. There were a lot of comedy sketches involved in the Colgate Comedy Hour. It was very much like a Saturday Night Live or I Think You Should Leave sketch comedy type of format, which is maybe how Tim Robinson knows about it. Super random reference though. They also did have visiting musicians that were featured, much like the format of Saturday Night Live. I looked at several lists of musical performers who were on the Colgate Comedy Hour to see if any of the names that Howie mentions actually were on the show, and the answer is no. None of them were on the Colgate Comedy Hour. <laughs> he did panels with Paul Julian, the guy who did the voice of the Roadrunner, beep beep. Don't you remember? We listened to his whole album that one night I told you you'd never be a good writer because you don't have a curious mind. Paul Julian, the guy that did the voice of Roadrunner on the Warner Brothers cartoons, this guy is real. He was a background artist, he was an animator, and he did voices for a few characters. He worked on Sylvester the Cat, he worked on Tweety Bird, and he absolutely did all the vocalizations for Roadrunner. Meep, meep. Additional fun fact, he even did the voice of Dee Dee on Dexter's Laboratory when she was imitating the Roadrunner. He came back in and recorded that. It's incredibly cool. Paul Buffano. Paul Buffano, the Paul Buffano. How hard is that? Paul Buffano, come on. Is not real, but Jules Buffano is a real person. Julian Buffano. He was also a ragtime jazz musician. He published music in the 1920s, early 1920s through the end of the 20s, but Paul Buffano is not real. We could pretend that Paul is his older brother. The album Cafeteria Jangle is also real. It is by Jules Buffano, and it was published in 1921. So there you have it. Some of it was real, a lot of it was fake, and all I know is that I have an appetite for some cold gazpacho soup, and maybe some Arizona walnuts right now. 
This party is officially boring. I'm bored, and you people are very rude. Let's, let's get out of here.